Welcome back, all my 40K fanatics out there. I'm DJ here with Tim's Nation, and today I want to give you the first in a short series I'm going to do called Farewell to Ninth Edition. No, I'm not just here striking a pose. There is a reason for this. And one of it is to showcase, and I'm sure we all have, a bunch of us have these, our bookshelf of, our bookshelf of shame of all the massive amounts of unused and old codexes and old stuff. I'm going to need to get a new bookshelf. Because I'm going to be running out of room, especially after the end of this edition, when it's going to be time here soon to put a lot of books on the shelf. Now, 10th edition hasn't fully hit, so some of the stuff is still active, but we can go over some. And what a fitting way to open up this video than to talk about where it all began with 9th edition and the Indominus box set, as well as one of our big, beautiful core rule books. This is actually going to be the book that I'm retiring today with this video. Since one, we use Arcs of Omen to play realistically right now, but I always like keeping this one out because these books, first of all, these uh, core rule books are big, beautiful, nice rule books. They have lots of artwork and lots of lore, and they're just for a 40k collector. These are an absolute, just great thing to have as part of our collections. Expensive books too. Plus, it's always funny when a friend says, oh, how do you play this game? And you can go, well, here you go. Here's the rule book, which is the size of maybe your, a small textbook that we would have had back in school. Uh, so, again, with this series, I want to cover a whole bunch of different stuff uh, as we say goodbye to ninth edition. Some of the highs, some of the lows, and just take a trip down the uh, memory lane with all the nostalgia from ninth edition. Some of it's going to be good. Some of it's going to be bad. And as I said, this video we're going to start off with the Indominus box set. So, guys, let's take a look. And here it is, the Indominus box set. Uh, like we're seeing with the Leviathan set that's going to be coming out soon, which is, again, one of the reasons I thought this would be fitting to do. The Indominus box set was our core rule set for 9th edition. Uh, in here had all your core rule books, as well as two armies to play. <laughs> so traditionally... For those who are new to the game or new to the hobby, Games Workshop produces a starter set that has an army, that two armies that you can play against each other and learn the game. Uh, Indominus was no different in this sense, in down to the realm that they actually gave you a small pamphlet inside of it that would allow you to just use the models inside of this set. And that's going to be some of the stuff we're going to talk about with this. It's not going to be a super long video because... If you know what the box sets are, then you understand that. But it kind of gives you some idea of what Leviathan is going to uh, bring to the table and what we're going to see moving forward for those who are brand new to the hobby and would like to uh, maybe pick up these starter sets and want to know what is included and what should they do. Uh, or, or is this even a, is this a must buy or is this, is this a you can buy? Guys, thanks for tuning in. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do. Like, share, comment down below, especially comment your other 9th edition memories, nightmares, whatever it may be. Try and stay in the idea of like the full encompassment of the game, and we can talk about those things and bring up some points and memories and share it all with the entire community on these the moments in time, from whether it was Dark Eldar's Reign of Terror to uh, Custodes getting nerfed in the ground. And that one, that was, that's one that... I am not a Custodes player, but man, whew, that was one of the harshest nerfs I've ever seen. But today, we're going to talk about this Indominus box set. Uh, you know, like I said multiple times, Leviathan box set was just teased. Uh, spoiled? Teased? Spoiled. A little bit of A, a little bit of B. And we get to see what's coming out in it. So now as a newer player looking at this, you go, okay, I want to play this game. So I need to buy this box set. But wait, it's $250, I think is what I've heard, uh, the dollars. So... That's a kind of a chunky price tag to put to a game that you may not know if you want to play or not. And this was a similar aspect at the beginning of ninth, where we had the Indominus box. Inside of the Indominus box, you did get the core rule book. You did get a mini rule book, which was just the, um, I would say a mini codex, a mini dex, that would tell you what each of the two, each of the two armies units would do. And that would allow you to be able to do a quick pickup game with a buddy of yours if you know you wanted to play the necrons and someone else wanted to play the space marines cool get them painted up get them built up 
put them on the table, and here are the rules so you can play those into it. Uh, I remember as a Necron player, I was mildly disappointed that the Scarabs were initially only at three models per unit. It was sitting there batedly waiting for that Codex to come out because only having three Scarabs in a unit was not did not make me happy. I, anyone who knows me, I love my Scarabs. I love getting my Scarabs out on the table. And to only be able to take three models in a unit, it just meant they died. Just meant they died. But it looked like this was not meant to be... Um, it was meant to be placed into a vacuum, which meant that this was meant to be self-contained within its own rules to play. As we saw then with the codexes coming out, score packs were able to be larger unit size, as well as scarabs. So it was just the starter set. Now, traditionally with these starter sets, a lot of the incremental pieces are broken down and sold separately. The rule book is sold separately. And here is one thing that I will tell you is so far Games Workshop Shop has said, the rules will be free. Uh, basically, from what I've noticed, and this is me just speaking from a business, I, I've run some restaurants and business experience and that, Games Workshop is not making any money on rules. The main rule book and that stuff, they don't make any money on that. They make money selling models. They make money on the codexes, those books. Uh, their Black Library does very well. So they do sell a lot of books. And the codexes do well because of the collector idea behind them and also the only way really to get the rules even with a code maybe in the future we may see the ability to just download only the rules and not buy the codex and i think that would still sell because codexes in their own right are beautiful books that we collect um, but you can get the rule book the core rule book outside of the box set so if you're a newer player and you're not interested in space marines and you're not interested in tyranids for the leviathan box have no fear the book will be here. Uh, aside from that, they give you some other little like templates and, and helping little cards and stuff like that. But a lot of that stuff is only helpful into its vacuum. Now with Leviathan, it looks like we're going to be getting the mission card. So that's a little bit more of an incentive. But, and I mean, this is a huge, 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 but with some of these core sets, people like to purchase multiple ones. Why? because there is limited models that come in these things. Or, in the case of Tyranids and, and now and Necrons as before, there are models that, uh, there are units and the Outriders, excuse me, like the Outriders and some of the Marine stuff, but there are models that are exclusive to these core box sets. And the ninth edition release of Indominus was no, uh, was no slouch on that one. So my story for Indominus was I had Everything set up. I had my credit card sitting in front of me. I was on the website ready to go. And I was sitting there and it's like an episode, the episode of Big Bang Theory where they're uh, trying to buy tickets to Comic-Con. I'm sitting there, refresh, refresh, refresh. Site crashes, can't order it through. Next thing you know, all the pre-orders are gone. I was heartbroken. I was sad. But then my community picked up behind me and I had a couple people get me in contact with some other people and go, no. You're the Necron guy. You, you need, we need to get this box set. And they were able to. And I found a guy who has sold me the box set, said, here you go. You're on the list. It's yours. And I made the payment to him. I actually ended up getting it for like $20 cheaper uh, through a store with discounts. So that was nice. And uh, then I traded off the Marine portion for more Necrons. I think with the Indominus box set, I ended up buying like probably four or five people's Indominus collection just to be able to fill out the score packs and stuff like that. And that was the thing. That was the only way I was going to get score packs was from these core sets and trying to pick them up from sales or ordering online on someone who had pieced everything out. And people knew this. People knew that having the Indominus box set was possibly going to be a way to mark this thing up. I believe it sold at $200 at its time. Don't, uh, don't quote me on that one. And there was a lot of people who had a lot of box sets that they were about to be purchasing and putting up online to be sold. And Games Workshop comes in with a wiffle ball bat and says, no, you're not. The next day, I believe it was, Games Workshop came out there and said, hey, guys, so we realized everybody wanted an Indominus box set and we couldn't make enough of them. So we're going to do a second printing. Uh, just... Let us know if you wish to order it. We're only going to make these made to order. So there's only going to be just as many as we're going to make. 
But at the end of their announcement, they said, so sorry to all of those people who bought a bunch of Indominus box sets and now will not be able to sell them at a higher markup. Games Workshop hit all of the people that tried to corner the market really, really fast. So hopefully this is going to be another mo motion into this for the Leviathan release. One thing that I think is interesting about that, though, when they did the whole announcement is if somebody went out there, let's say just one person bought 20 Indominus boxes for the exact reason to mark them up online. And then suddenly they see that there's this release, so they're not going to get the markup. So the best they're going to do is selling them at retail price. And even that's going to be kind of tough because if you can buy it at retail, why not buy it at retail and not have to wait to, for it to be shipped? So what's interesting is then those people are going to end up canceling their orders. So in the end, Games Workshop would have then had 19, if the person kept one, if they didn't cancel all 20, 19 unfulfilled orders coming back into their warehouse that they wouldn't have had to reproduce. I still wonder if that was part of the mindset of, hey, how do we tell these people, no, you're not allowed to, even though they did have things in set, uh, they had stuff set up to prevent people from doing this. There were people that figured out ways around it, whether they created false IDs that were just ordering a bunch, etc. I'm not exactly sure. I'm, that's not my side of computer uh, brilliance or any of that knowledge. Uh, but they were able to create some type of proxy account and order multiple of these. They probably canceled a lot of those orders. So Games Workshop didn't have to make the order probably as many as we thought with it because then they just were able to do what they initially wanted to do, and that was distribute the product to the gamers. Now, for the rest of us, yes, were there a bunch of us buy, selling, and trading stuff around there? Absolutely, but we were buying one. We were buying maybe two. I uh, well, Okay, I, I won't lie. I think right now this is one. I have another one up on the shelf, and I think there's one over there. I think I have three of these actual full boxes from the Indominus set. Um, and a lot of that was just transportation after purchasing it from someone or something like that. I mean, I have bottoms and tops of it. But yeah, I traded my Marines. I wasn't playing Marines. So why not? I'll give you my Marines for your Necrons. I was able to do so much of that that actually one of the units I look forward to airing on this channel is my custom Lich Guard with the Overlord model from this set. Uh, but... It was nice to see that Games Workshop was paying attention to what had just happened to us as gamers. Because there's a lot of us out here who wanted the Indominus box as a collector. We wanted the Indominus box for the bottles in there. We wanted it in there to play a game. We weren't trying to buy one or two boxes to turn a profit. We were buying, I was, I bought one box and then traded off the Marines and then maybe split with somebody else and said, here, you wanted to buy your box. I'll throw you 50% of the cost. Well, it's 40% of the cost. Now you got your book, you got all your rules. I'll take the Necrons and there we go. It was still a heck of a deal. Uh, so hopefully that's what we're about to see with Leviathan this year. I think that uh, Games Workshop has already kind of realized that this is going to be popular. These are going to hit, this is going to come out and people are going to want this. So they have things in Place with a lot of the store owners that I talked to um, for blackout days for when the release is tentatively. Um, I think that's actually just going to be the pre-release day. Again, I go back to my like customer service realm of it. I feel like the day that this goes up on pre-order is going to be the hectic one. The day that it's actually released and being able to be distributed to everybody is when you have one guy who stands there with a clipboard or girl standing there with a clipboard and they say your name, show them an ID, check it off, hand you a box. It's a one person job for maybe an hour because most of us gamers, we're, we're, we want the, as soon as that hits, as soon as we can get it, we want it. We're going to be there for it. And it's going to be the same thing with Leviathan. So I think that the blackout days that they're talking about are going to be the days that everything is officially going to go up on pre-order. And then we're looking at July. That's my guess right now. If someone has seen something else, please comment down below because it's, you're not only helping me, but you're helping anyone else who hasn't seen it yet. Uh, so to wrap things off with the Indominus box set, what we got out of here, we got some cool new models. And with these core boxes, and like I said, there are models that you cannot get anywhere else for quite some time. 
Scorpex for a while didn't have their own box. The Overlord was stuck in here. He was only part of this. Uh, even the Canoptic Reanimator took a very long time to get that. The new Warrior models uh, were only the push to build, which everything in here was pushed to build, were only available through there. And correct me if I'm wrong, but outside of, I think there's a, there's a Necron command box. But outside of the command box, I don't think there's any other way to get a Scorpec Lord other than the Indominus box set. I think you have to buy one of the two like collector style box set. You can't just get a Scorpec Lord by himself. Albeit, not real one's really looking for them because he ain't that good. Sadly, 10th edition. Hey, hey, Scorpec Lord for 10th edition. So this was a good time. This was a good time when this book box released. It really started to uh, uh, show, okay, it was a good time for Necrons specifically because we got so many new models. And it was very exciting to see them right off the fold in, in Indominus and in 9th edition. Now, when we go into 10th, we have uh, Space Marines, of course, and Tyranids once again. And I say once again because in previous editions, Marines were bundled with the starter sets. Marines, uh, I'm sorry, Tyranids. Tyranids have been kind of a common uh, enemy to the Marines as far as starter sets go. They are a good antithesis to them, where Marines are tough and less models and bigger and meaner and protected. Tyranid are small, they are weaker, and they are a swarm. And that definitely looks like what we're seeing with this Leviathan box is they're really emphasizing the, squ the swarm beyond the Screamer Killer. You have so many new Gaunt breeds, so that's kind of cool to see. Um, I do have a Tyranid collection, but I don't plan on adding any of them to it for me. I'm getting the end of the Leviathan box, hopefully, and I'm going to trade off my Marine port or my Tyranid portion for more of the Marines because man, those Terminators look cool. Oh man, as a kid, that's what I pictured a Terminator should look like. That's how big I pictured a Terminator to be, and he he is cool. He is cool, cool, cool. So I definitely want a ten man of those and two fives. Uh, the Librarian looks awesome. I'm gonna have two of those, one for my Marines and one for my Grey Knights. And just whew, that box set, that box set, that looks cool. There's some cool looking models in there. I'm really excited to have a lot of new infantry. So hopefully infantry has got a good staying point in this. Otherwise my Marines will get painted and get put firmly and cleanly onto a shelf. So that was, that's, you know, right up there with the uh, score pack Lord from the Indominus box. So in conclusion, to some people out there who may be watching this video to make the determination if they should buy this or not. If you play Marines, you should probably buy it. Trade your Tyranids off for the Marine portion of it. You're getting quite a good deal on a lot of really good Marine models that probably are not going to have their own private releases for a while. I think the Terminators would probably be one of the first ones since they've been teased so much, but some of the other models you may not see for some time outside of the main box sets. Uh, if you're a Tyranid player, oh my gosh, I think this is an auto buy because there is so many cool new units in there that whew, you're going to be waiting a while. You're going to be waiting a while as a Necron player and how long it took for some of these things to come out. It's going to be a little bit of a wait before we see some of these individual boxes. I could be wrong. And for all you guys out there who are Tyranid players, I hope I'm wrong. But that's, that is the sense of the, the reality of it and the scope of things from what I've seen in the past. So for a Tyranid player, yeah, get it. Take that Marine portion, go to your local game store, say, hey, I'm buying this box set, put my name down. If anyone comes up here and wants to trade their Tyranids for my Marines, I gotcha. Because there's going to be a lot of people. There, there already is. Um, I see a lot of people buying the box set, uh, especially for my gaming group. They're buying the box set and they want both sides of it. They're like, I don't even play Tyranids, but I want these models. So they look great. So there is going to be that back and forth in it. Now, if you don't care about Marines, you don't care about Tyranids, and you just want to play 10th edition, whether you're just getting into the game or you have been a veteran for a while, the main rule book is going to be a collector's item. If you wish to purchase it and have it for your collection, that's fine. The main rules are going to be available online. For me personally, I don't like staring, <clears throat> maybe this is with my age, but I don't like staring at a phone to read Warhammer rules. <clears throat> I like to be able to do it in a book where I can leaf through the pages, keep my finger into a page and flip over to another rule. 
<clears throat> to confirm something I've seen. It's just how I've trained myself. So me, I will always try to keep the books on hand. I feel they're easier for me to learn that way. Plus, they look beautiful. You know, as I showed before, I have all mine in a collection. I just need to get a bigger bookshelf so I can put all my uh, put them all out on display because it's while we call these things the walls of shame, while we have our unopened boxes, our unused books, our templates for flamers and blast weapons, and they all end up just accumulating over there. It's kind of cool to still have those things and, and have them around as decoration, I guess, at this point. But it, it reminds you of times when things were, you know, it's funny. They always say it reminds you of simpler times. No, not in Warhammer. No, no. It reminds you of more complicated times with blast weapons and going, I hit three guys. No, you're not touching the fourth guy, that third guy. You're only hitting two. <sighs> I miss templates and I don't. I like, they were cool, but I'm glad they're gone. I really, really am glad they're gone. So that's, uh, uh, that, that's, that's my little, that's uh, my little, uh, Tim's take, my Tim's take on, uh, template weapons from that time. So I think the only thing left to say is let's get back over and, uh, got to put the core rule book where it belongs as we move towards the end of this edition. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video again, comment down below on some of your fondest memories from this edition, some of the things that uh, were very pivotal moments, and I will try my best to cover everything uh, in my next videos. I want to, you know, bring the community together and we can talk about all this cool stuff, all the stuff that we, our fun times, our good times, the bad times even, such as Imperial Guard banners. <sighs> but anyways, at the end of this video, one thing that we need to do is retire this book. So core rule book, you're big, you're beautiful, and you're going on the shelf. And that's going to be where it's going to have to sit for a little while. Because like I said, I'm going to have to get a new bookcase because we got a lot more books to come, a lot more content to put out there. And I look forward to making it all for you guys soon. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you again soon.